Hello everyone, this is Sayi. In today's video, I will be coloring the sketchbook spread of Tomioka from Demon Slayer. A few months ago, I did a spread of my favorite Hashira and that was the first time I drew Tomioka. Although I still think his face looks cute, I was never completely satisfied with the coloring and the pose. I feel he looks really stiff. And as for the colors, I don't think I reached the intensity that I would have wanted. So this time around, I wanted to give it another shot and see if I could improve upon the things I didn't like before. I started with a dark blue as background to set the color scenario and really get into the mood I wanted to achieve. For this side of the spread, I almost only worked with wash. To start with the skin, I plucked the shadows areas with a light blue base. Now, as a small detour, I wanted to show you how I mixed the colors for this drawing session. I put little paint containers in order to create my own colors. These are half pans. I had these transparent boxes where I would store them, and I used the white poster color I talked about in the last video. My gouache are Artiza which is a fairly inexpensive brand. All the colors that come in the set are very vibrant and saturated, which I don't particularly enjoy these days. I wanted to create more desaturated colors, and this is the only reason why I wanted to show you this segment, just in case you are not aware of how to do it. To create a desaturated version of any color, you can mix the color you want to desaturate with its complementary color. In this case, to create a desaturated light blue, I mixed a cerulean blue with orange. Be sure to only add a bit of the complementary color at first, since if you mix too much of it, it can become really muddy, and that's not what we want. You can try with small amounts each time until you reach the color wanted. I added the white poster color to get a higher value. A complementary color is the one opposing other in the color wheel. You can find complementary colors using an app or with these color wheels. There are many different types online, just use the one you find more comfortable. Since the consistency of the paint is thicker than I wanted, I added a few drops of water, which also makes the paint a bit lighter in value, so be aware of that in case you want to match colors. I wanted to create my own color palette since I find really dreadful to have to mix colors each time. I always prefer media in which I have the color ready to use, such as alcohol markers, but I recognized that I was not taking advantage of the properties of the gouache leaning on my laziness, and I was also not getting the colors that I wanted. At first, I bought these half pans containers, but the paint gets dry in those very quickly. So I got small containers with a lid. The paint will still dry out, but it takes longer to do it. Also, I can grab them on the other hand and have them close to me to dip the brush in. That way, I don't have to turn around or stretch my hand to grab the paint. It might sound like an insignificant detail, but those details make the processes dreadful to me and I lose motivation to do them. So I am always thinking about solutions that will make my processes easier and more fluid, so I can work more comfortably and having my colors ready to use and close to me made this painting really fun to make, among other things. One of those things is that mixing a bigger amount of paint in a container opposed to mixing a small amount on a palette ensures me of having enough paint to work through the whole painting process, to not run out of paint and having to mix again, having too much colors or having it dried out, having to add more water, because like I said before, adding water will make the color lighter. Another thing is that mixing the paint with white poster color makes the colors more opaque, which I highly appreciate since I like to go back and forth with the colors and I always try to fix mistakes, and an opaque color makes it easier. As I have heard online, quality brands such as Holbein are very opaque right out of the tube, but I've never used those kind of quality brands. 
So having the chance to fix to my liking my more affordable paint is highly appreciated. As for the drawing, I've been thinking lately, particularly after starting to edit my videos for YouTube, that I have a very erratic way of working. I never noticed before, I literally go back and forth without concentrating in finishing one part first. It's like I attack whatever catches my eye, which is fine for me, but I wonder if that makes you confused. I noticed that it was a lot easier to work with colored pencils now on top of the paint. Before I didn't like how it looked, but on this illustration they worked seamlessly. I wonder if the poster color made this possible as well. Look how opaque the paint looks here. I can use a light color on top of the very dark blue and I don't even need to give a second coat. That was not possible before with the paint straight out of the tube. I didn't cut out that many scenes to this video, it was a more realistic edit to my workflow, although I gotta say that it took me quite a while to finish this side of the spread. I was working on it for a full day. I don't usually have the time to work on anything for a whole day, as much as I'd want to, but I felt the hard work was worth it. Although I had to use time to mix the colors, it still made the whole process more fluid. I was also thinking that I should try making more steadily longer videos because one of the intentions for my YouTube channel was to keep you company while you draw as well. When I draw, I like having a series or movie as background and I'm always looking for videos to keep me company when I draw and it is rather disappointing seeing artists that I like having 8 minute videos. Like, mm, I will have to find another video way too soon. Having a longer video at the background helps me concentrate for longer, without having to think in finding another video too soon. This is the reason why I try to keep my voice calm and nice, so you can concentrate while you draw as well. I don't know about you guys, but I hate loud noises when I'm concentrating. Well, I hate loud noises always, but especially when I'm concentrating. So, a high-spirited YouTuber is like my nemesis. <laughs> So I wanted to create videos that I would like to watch myself. The only problem is that I am not confident in being able to speak for so long. <laughs> but it's fine, since a pause once in a while is also nice.
The highlight I added to his face made the nose stand out and I really liked the shape it ended up having. I usually don't like the way I draw noses, but this could be a starting point. Here I wanted to justify having that yellow rim light by adding an orange background but I didn't like it and I just covered it with the same color I used for the rest of the background. By now this side of the spread is almost finished, at least the main character, but you can see that although I used desaturated colors compared to the originals, the combination of all of them makes the illustration look very vibrant and colorful. Here I added Tomioka's water breathing and details with the white jelly roll in 1.0 Because the other ones don't work, don't use them I added the buttons with the Artex Gold Metallic Acrylic Marker And here it comes, the villain of this spread, the antagonist of our beloved Tomioka, the pattern of his haori. But this time around, I had the secret weapon, the Artex acrylic markers and the experience of the previous illustration. I was going to win this battle. And for the first one, sure. The second one, <laughs> we'll see. To be continued. For the right side of the spread, I wanted to draw in another style, black and white with a bit of screen tones. Also, I wanted to make Tomioka in a more modern setting. 
I looked for a lot of references on Pinterest and Tomioka appeared in a lot of scenarios, some really crazy, but I settled on how he looked like a college student and a high schooler with long hair in Japan, uh, well, modern setting, not a realistic one. <laughs> I tried working with a ballpoint pen since I thought hatching will be quicker to make than nibs and ink, but for some reason sometimes the ink wouldn't come out of the pen. I don't know if it was because the page got oil from my hands, granted that I have very oily skin, but when that happened it was very frustrating. It completely disrupted my workflow and I had to change to multiliners, which worked no problems. Unfortunately, I only have a very thick 08 black multiliner. I need to get more of those. Working black and white is so dreamy to me. It has a very special charm. Hatching, cross hatching, making effects with only ink, it's so mesmerizing to me. Oh, I wish black and white webcomics were still popular. Nowadays, I see the good points in color webcomics, because I hated coloring my webcomics in the beginning, but when I went to my trip to Japan last year, I brought with me a lot of manga, and each time I read them, I get love struck. They are so beautiful, no colors can compare to their charm. For this third drawing, I drew Tomioka and Shinobu kissing. <laughs> that was not something that I thought myself. I didn't think of them as a possible couple, but my friend sowed that seed in me. It was only based on that one scene where Tomioka grabs Shinobu, so she doesn't go after Tanjiro and Nezuko, but that lit a fire into the fans' hearts. <laughs> Apparently, and I am here to deliver. Well, here comes the second battle. The one I won... Well, I'd consider it a tie. I couldn't, for the life of me, continue with the howdy pattern from color to black and white. My brain melted and I made a lot of mistakes that I had to fix later. And here I embarked on a crusade to reproduce the color of my sketchbook's sheets in paint. <laughs> to fix the mistakes I made with the black ink. I just made a mix of yellow ochre with white and I was adding a few drops of water and trying it out. I had to wait for a bit because light colors tend to dry out lighter when it comes to wash. So I had to wait for the paint to dry to see if the color was accurate or not. When I was working with the lights on my studio, it looked fine. The color looked almost perfect. But when I took it outside to varnish it, I noticed that the color of the paint I made was a bit too yellow. So I will have to add a bit more white to make it more accurate. Also, those spikes on Tomioka's hair that I, <laughs> that I drew on the first illustration of the page were so difficult to cover. 
I don't lie when I say that I had to give it around 20 layers of paint. I think it got covered fairly nicely, finally, but it was difficult to achieve. To start to finish it off, I added some screen tones. A small announcement. The other day I made my first live stream on YouTube to celebrate reaching 500 subs. It was a very shy stream, but I was very grateful some of you showed up. I wasn't expecting anyone to show up to tell you the truth. Being near 1000 subs, I want to make another one when I reach it. I don't think it will be this Saturday, but maybe next week's Saturday. Since last stream was digital, now I want to make this next one traditional. Probably fan art and requests for fan art. I'll let you know in the community tab beforehand. And this is it, the final result. I gotta say that I really enjoyed working on this spread, although I do believe that I stepped up my game after the last Tomioka's illustration in terms of colors. I still need to work a bit harder on the stiffness of the pose, but overall, I loved every second working on it. I hope you enjoyed this video, tell me what you think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!